Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome on board. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the previous video was, uh, if you look at the fuel figure over here, okay, this thing says 111.8 and all in thousands of pounds. Now, the flight that we're doing is Bombay to Ahmedabad. We don't need this much, this much of fuel. So let's just uh, refer to our flight plan once again. And there we go. Now here in the plant fuel option, if you look at the last part, it says block fuel from Bombay, 10,288 kilograms. Now let's just convert that into pounds. Uh, let's take 10,300. So that should be 22,707 pounds. Let's make it 22,708. So let's go to the weight sheet and let's change. And if you look at this part, it says fuel. 50,000 kilograms. Now we need 10,000, not 50. That's a lot. So let us get down to that's 14, 10,146. How much we need? We need uh, 10,300. We are 10,001. 10%. Let's go to 11%. 11% gives us 11,160. And uh, we can go back to exactly 10,000. But then I have to do a lot of changes and calculations. Let's just keep it to 11%, that is 11,160. Now, once we've set the fuel, now here it says in pounds, 24,600. And how much we needed? 22,700. We have 24,600, which is okay. But once the weight is changed, the speed is going to change as well. So let's just click it again. So now the V1, VR, V2 is 132, 139 and 148. So V2 is 148. Let's just set that on the MCP. So we've done with the pre-flight procedures, pre-flight checklist. Now what we do is while we wait for the documentation before departure, we'll do a departure briefing where what happens is basically flying is more of a beautiful choreography between both the pilots. So we don't uh, overlap each other's area of uh, responsibilities. If one pilot is flying, the other pilot was supposed to be do doing the monitoring part. He's got his own area of responsibilities in the cockpit. So departure briefing goes as follows. We'll first discuss the weather conditions in the departure airfield, which in this case is Mumbai. Uh, how is the visibility? What kind of weather do we have? Is it raining, not raining? What's the temperature? And so performance wise, what we can expect in this kind of weather condition? And what kind of uh, weather conditions there in the alternate airfield and then we uh, check check the taxi chart and we discuss what kind of pushback may we expect what taxi routing to the active runway what is the length of the runway is there any work in progress going on anywhere any taxiway closures what kind of flap settings required for the departure and then we cross check the legs page uh, with the departure chart and we check cross check all the routings and if there is any altitude requirement or the speed requirement in any kind of waypoints we cross check all that once this is done then we discuss non-normal procedures in case of a rejected takeoff what are the actions after rejecting if you need evacuation who goes where the pilot in command always leaves the airplane last but after leaving where will he meet the other crew members and uh, in case of fire any kind of fire is there any memory actions to be done before referring to that particular checklist so we do all of these uh, discussion and we're done with the departure briefing and then we wait for all the documents to come on board what are the documents required so one of them is the fuel receipt after this we need the trim sheet then there is uh, engineering acceptance there's a tech log a technical log book for every airplane then we have the general declaration or the gd which is required for all the international flights uh, which includes the names passport numbers and details of each crew member operating the airplane and once we land in the in that particular country we don't need a visa to enter and then in the end is the security where the security personnel ensures all the doors are closed cargo is loaded passengers are loaded everything is set and then the security guard hands over a paper where we have signatures of each department. Second last signature is the security personnel. And at the end, the pilot in command accepts the airplane. So once we have all these documents on board, we can close the door. And this is when you hear a passenger announcement where the cabin crew says, all ground personnels to D plane closing doors. Once all the doors are closed, we ask the ATC for pushback and startup. 
ADC gives us the clearance for push and start and then we go for the before start procedures followed by before start checklist. So let's assume all the doors are closed, all the paperwork are done. ATC has given us pushback facing southwest in this case. So we call for the before start procedures and the procedures goes as follows. It starts off with one cabin call, all doors automatic cross and report. In different aircrafts, it is different kind of call. But basically the idea is to arm all the passenger doors in such a way that if you open it now, the safety uh, slides will inflate. So once you do that, then four actions. Pumps, pumps, anti-collision, transponder. First pumps is the hydraulic pump. You put all four hydraulic pumps to auto. It's already in auto in the sim. Fuel pumps, switch it on. The main tank pumps are on. You don't need the center tank pumps because there is no fuel in the center tanks. It's zero. So we pumps, pumps, anti-collision light or in the 787 is the beacon light and transponder. This is when you put the TCAS transponder mode to XPDR and once you do that, the ATC can see your position on the ground. Before start procedures complete, before start checklist. Okay, one more thing I forgot uh, to mention that the 787 has electronic checklist. But if you hit the checklist button, it says checklist in op. It doesn't work, so we'll refer to the manual checklist. So yes, before start checklist, flight deck door closed and locked. Passenger signs are on. MCP V2 heading altitude. All right, V2 is 148, heading 270 altitude, flight level 350 is set. Takeoff speed V1 VR V2. Uh, we will check it from the takeoff page. So one pilot reads out this, the other pilot cross checks on the EFB where we've done all the takeoff calculation. But uh, EFB is not there, so we'll go ahead with this one. Takeoff speeds V1 VR V2, V1 132, VR 139, V2 148. CDP flight is completed. Trim is a set. In this case, it's 10.0 in the green band. Uh, we cannot change it, so just leave it like that. Tax and takeoff briefing completed. Beacon light is on before start checklist complete. And this is when the, the, the pilot will contact the ground and say, okay, we are clear to push back facing southwest. Now for the pushback, I've been using the pushback helper app, which is this one. You see a window on the top right and it says connected now. So what I do, I hit the activate button and you can see the tow truck moving. In the meanwhile, let's disconnect the parking brake. Parking brake is disconnected and we've started pushback. Now aligning uh, the airplane exactly at the yellow line is uh, kind of a trick. And basically you need uh, practice and with experience you can do that. Okay, we're done with the pushback. Let's set the parking brake. And talking about the engine uh, start procedure, all of the airplane uses bleed air from the APU to begin the, the initial rotation of the engine. And then after a particular speed, fuel flow kicks in, combustion starts and the engine starts. And this is done one engine at a time. But on the 787, we don't use the bleed air from the APU for starting the engines. 787 can start engines only using battery powers and we can start both engines at the same time. That's the best part of this airplane. So engine start procedures. Let's get the secondary engine indication on. It's starting right and left. Fuel control switch, right and left. And then we monitor the startup. Okay, looks like the engines have stabilized. Generally, there's a green running indication, but it's not there on this one. So, all right, so engines have started. We can do the before taxi procedures now. In Airbus, we call it after engine start procedure. Boeing says before taxi procedure. Before taxi procedures, APU off. Engine anti is auto. We can clear off the secondary engine indication. Set flaps to 10, the departure flap setting. And once done, uh, we can do the flight controls check. Aileron left, aileron right, elevators up, elevators down, rudder left, rudder right. And call for before taxi checklist. Before taxi checklist, anti is auto. Recall, the button doesn't work here. 
recall is checked. If there's any kind of malfunction, it show up in the ICAS indication. Auto brake is checked RTO. Flight controls checked ground equipment. The ground personals have left. Clear on the left and clear on the right before taxi check is complete. And now request for taxi. And once we get the taxi clearance, taxi lights, runway turn off lights on and we can start the taxi. And I've seen uh, the taxing uh, the 787s and the 747s in the simulator, especially around uh, tight corners is pretty difficult. So what I use is basically I use differential thrust left and right uh, in order to turn better and it really helps. So let's get the parking brakes off, thrust up. And if you see my engine indication, you can see differential thrust. Okay, that's just about it for this video. I'll catch you all in the next one for uh, departure and climb. Thank you for watching. Ciao.